Hi First Violins, this is your discussion video for English Folk Song. There isn't a whole lot of tricky stuff in this one like there is in Tangerine Rag, um, but there are some basic things that I want to go over. First of all, you have to count really hard <laughs> uh, and be mindful of your bow distribution. Make sure that you're not pulling your bow too fast and then you end up with no bow. If you look at measure two, really, right there, right in the beginning, you have this big old long note. It lasts for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half, eight and a half beats, roughly. Um, there is a little down bow in parentheses, uh, somewhere, you know, in the middle of measure three. That basically means to change your bow when you need to, but not like a whole bunch of bows. So really, you should be starting this note up bow, and at some point you change to down bow, and it's all very smooth, it's very slow, and you're not like, here we go, I did an up bow, oh no, I need to do down bow, and now there's four beats left, and like, you've run out of bow or something. So make sure that you're counting that note for the right amount of time, and that you distribute your bow accurately. Um, make sure, just reading straight off of my little notes, um, make sure that you are playing a low two on the E and A strings. Remember that low two is actually back here by your first finger. If high two is up here on the tape, low two is not somewhere just like moderately sort of behind the tape. It's actually way back here beside your first finger. Anything that is in this no man's land in between your low two and high two, if you play anything kind of swimming around in here, uh, it's a wrong note. For no matter whether you're trying to play C natural or C sharp, anything that's in this space, this whole like finger's width uh, worth of space, um, is just, it's not real notes. So, be really mindful that you're playing low two on your E and A strings. F sharp is still in the key signature, so any um, any F sharps that you have will be a regular two, a high two on the D string, or a regular first finger on the tape on the E string. Um, fourth finger rule in all capitals, uh, <laughs> capital letters. Um, I am teaching my students uh, that there's a, a rule for using your fourth finger and I think it's a pretty good one. This particular piece has fourth finger marked over just about, if not every single note that can be played by your fourth finger, and I disagree with a lot of them. Um, so I'm gonna tell you guys about the fourth finger rule and I hope you guys, you can follow it. If the note is longer than two quarter note beats, whether it is two quarter notes in a row, a half note, or this eight beat long E starting in measure two, use your fourth finger. If it's like one of these random little eighth notes or something, don't worry about it. If it is convenient to use your fourth finger, if you are comfortable and able to use your fourth finger, go ahead and do it. But if it's gonna throw you off, if it's gonna be weird, I, I will not be mad if you do not play a fourth finger for every single fourth finger note that is written <laughs> in this piece. Um, mostly as first violins, we want you to use your fourth finger to avoid the open E string. So the, the E in measure, starting in measure two fits the rule that it lasts longer than two quarter note beats so we're gonna play it with our fourth finger. Also, it is an E. It is our open E string, which we want to avoid at all costs. So that's like a little kind of addendum to the rule. That's a little kind of exception that please, please, please do not honk on your open E string for like any reason. <laughs> um, that if there's an eighth note E that you need to play, go ahead and use your fourth finger for that because 
crossing the the action of crossing over to play the open E will immediately make it pop out and make it louder than if you use your fourth finger. So that's the only thing that you guys need to worry about is avoid your open E string. Um, now just a few other little things like from measure five to measure 21, all of the upper strings are playing the exact same thing. That means violin one, violin two, and viola are playing the same notes and the same rhythms. So don't mess it up. <laughs> um, it's, it's a really easy part. It's gonna be really beautiful, but you need to listen and make sure that you guys are actually adjusting any pitch problems that you're having uh, so that it sounds like a unit, that, that there are three sections that are actually playing the same exact notes and rhythms. So you have to count carefully. You have to be adjusting your pitches. If you hear that you're a little out of tune, move your finger one way or the other to see if you can fix it and match everyone around you. At measure 21, the other two parts split off and start playing a harmony accompaniment figure and you guys are still playing the melody. So it's like a different kind of important that you play it out here than when you played it at the beginning and there were a whole bunch of people playing it. Now you guys are the only ones carrying the melody here. So bring it out, but also be mindful of the other parts that are, that have like this cool harmony and, and they're supporting you in a really neat way here. So this would be a great song to go uh, play along with the other parts. I'm only making a single speed of play along video for English folk song. Um, so go check out the second violin and viola parts and see how you all fit together. Uh, the only other, I've got two more notes here. Uh, really want to talk about how to play piano because this is something that you guys are struggling with kind of across the board in every single song <laughs> is dynamics and actually changing dynamics, mostly soft dynamics. It's totally normal for, for young people to struggle with playing soft. So there are a couple, couple rules, a couple of little easy things to, to help you immediately play softer. Rule or tip number one is to move your bow closer to the fingerboard. Not over it, we don't want you way over here, but just closer to the fingerboard, farther away from the bridge gets you a softer sound. Turning the bow stick away from your face so that the, I'm not sure if the, the camera's really picking this up um, or if I'm in frame, Make sure the stick is away from your face, never towards your face, this is bad. But when you tilt the stick away from your face, less bow hair is contacting the string, so less hair means less sound. Um, the other thing that you need to do is use a little bit less pressure, less weight. So try playing with absolutely no weight on your bow at all. This is just gravity. This is just what my bow makes. That's the amount of sound my bow makes when I'm not adding any pressure to it at all. So see if your bow makes a really soft sound. If it ends up doing something like this, because your bow hasn't been rehaired in a gazillion years, um, you're gonna have to add a little bit of pressure <laughs> um, to get a nice soft sound, but just go for something that isn't that doesn't have a whole lot of core sound to it um, and then is there anything else kind of a slower bow speed um, playing if you play too fast you get like a weird whispery sound so I'm far away from the bridge I've got my bow hair tilted I'm not using any pressure and I'm kind of using a slow bow. So we want this to be a really delicate sound from everybody. Uh, and I'm sure you guys can do it. You just need 
you need to know how to do it, which is something that a trombone player cannot really teach you. Um, then at the end, something he can teach you is how to play Divisi. Just want to go over it real quick. It means that as first violins, you will be divided. I don't know how he will be dividing it um, or if you guys will be dividing yourselves up. Some people will be playing the top line of music. Some people will be playing the bottom line of music. Um, just make sure that that doesn't freak you out. There's no, like, one part is not better than the other. <laughs> don't worry about that. It's just that the composer needed an extra voice here. And for whatever reason, he didn't want to give it to the second violin. So they just have a big old fat whole note in this bar. Um, so the first violins get double the fun. The violas even get to join in the fun at the end of, of bar 69. And the second violins just get nothing. Um, so when you get this Debussy part, because the section is split in half now, each person, each part has to be more. Because instead of being one section of like three or four first violins, you are now a section of two top line first violins, two bottom line first violins, and your parts are different. And we want to hear how it passes off and passes around the, the sections that are playing here. So make sure that you're really confident in your part, you're really confident in your counting. Um, and let's see here. It looks like there's another stagger bow in measure 70, 69, 70. Um, this fermata, you might end up taking two or three bows, depending on how long Mr. Hughes wants to hold it. So just make sure that you don't change at the same time as your stand partner, because we want it to sound like one big long note, not that it's like, we're gonna hold this for three beats, and then we're gonna hold this one for two beats, and this one for three beats. It's not that measured. Uh, it's just change your bow when you need to and keep an eye on the people around you so that you don't end up changing at the same time and making it sound like it's meant to be changing notes. Um, anyway, this is probably ended up being longer than I wanted to to discuss such a simple piece. Um, like I said, I'm only making a single speed of play long video for English folk song. So you've got your performance tempo video here, and then there will be um, violin two and viola performance tempo videos over on the side as well. Go check them all out, see how your parts fit together, see what happens, hopefully by, I don't know, maybe hearing me play it or, or you playing it along with a different violin part or viola part you can hear actually the potential beauty of this song. I know you guys hate it so much, probably because it's slow and boring, um, but it's actually really pretty. So your parents will be extremely impressed if you play it really pretty, but they're just gonna be like upset if you sabotage this song on purpose <laughs> because, oh, we hate it because it's slow and boring. Um, so don't make your parents or me do a sad face, a little tear. Um, make us do a tear because it was so beautiful, not because you sabotaged it. <laughs> um, so that's enough of that. Notes away. I'll be back with another discussion video for Sahara Crossing and happy practicing. <laughs>